सो आज का टॉपिक हमने लिखा है कोपिंग विथ एलर्जीज सो बेसिकली कैसे है कि एलर्जीज कोई भी प्रकार के हो सकते हैं कौन कौन सी एलर्जीज है इसका क्या इम्पैक्ट होता है अपने हेल्थ पे लंग पेशेंट्स क्या ज्यादा प्रोन है एलर्जीज को लेके एंड हम क्या कर सकते हैं एलर्जी से बचने के लिए दैट इज वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न टूडे and with this i am going to introduce our today's speaker dr kinjal modi so dr kinjal modi a consultant chest physician hai inhone md kiya hua hai from nayar hospital dnb kiya hua hai from new delhi he is fccp from usa edarm from europe he is also llb from mumbai university he has pdgmls and pd uh, pgd hhm ओके सो क्वाइट लॉट ऑफ डिग्रीज दैट ही हैज एंड इसके साथ ये प्रैक्टिस कर रहे हैं हिंदुजा हॉस्पिटल खार में उसके अलावा सूचक हॉस्पिटल मलाड एज वेल एज श्री बाल हनुमान हॉस्पिटल बोरवली इनकी काफी सारे नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल पब्लिकेशन है टू इज क्रेडिट एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट ना ही ये वेरी गुड क्लिनिशियन होने के बावजूद ही इज अ मैराथन रनर अ सिंगर एंड पोएट एज वेल and he is a very active member of various medical association so grand welcome to dr kinjal modi dr modi all over to you yeah uh big thank you to dr murmay and uh, sorry i am late by a year i can say so but there i durust hai i can definitely say i appreciate your all efforts during the covid time what to help out patients and uh, making a online platform for all the people who require uh, proper care and uh, uh, the rehabilitation as well as physiotherapy is and this good thing that you had initiated and this caring uh, program is basically again a very nice initiative that you bringing the hot topics or very uh, frequent topics to highlight patients need and uh, getting the people speak on that topics so that's very nice i appreciate that so to start with uh, i need to uh, share my screen so i'll do that Just give me a second. So, Doctor Kinjal, Bodhi, we have most of our participants who would understand Hindi as well as English. So that would be a usual request from most of them. And, That's okay. Uh, yes, English is fine. <laughs> Always goes that way. So, am I audible, visible properly? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. आप सब लोगों को कुछ भी क्वेरीज है तो एक ग्रुप चैट में डाल सकते हैं एनी कंसर्न एंड वी विल टेक ऑल द क्वेश्चंस एट द एंड दैट्स ओके नहीं इन बिटवीन इफ यू वांट टू स्टॉप एंड आस्क आई डोंट माइंड इट दैट्स फाइन आई एम वेरी फ्री फॉर दैट आई वांटेड टू बी इंटरनेट सो बेसिकली एज आई वाज टोल्ड दैट वी हैव अ गुड क्राउड एंड बेसिकली पीपल आर सफरिंग फ्रॉम एलर्जीज एंड द एलर्जी इटसेल्फ टॉपिक इज वेरी वी कैन से वेग एज वेल एज बेसिकली वेरी यूनिक आल्सो but most of doubts come in that topic so i put a disclaimer there no conflict of interest but acute conditions i cannot speak on much so basically i have uh, excluded out of it a very wide topic i tried to cover in itna kam se kam ho sake i'll try to cover that way and i want it to be interactive session basically not a boring lecture so i'm always want that way that people should interact with me during a lecture otherwise lo kya abhi dopar 4 baje aaram se kha pi ke so sakte so that's the concept sure so starting with the allergy i want you to answer this question whoever can do i'll be very happy to answer uh, to read it so where is the allergy capital of the world can anyone answer that you can add in chat box unmute kar sakte hai either chat box mein kar sakte hai knows puri duniya mein acha oh sorry <laughs> no problem that's fine what happens so where do you think uh, google karna mat baitha that's okay otherwise wo to main aapko jawab de hi dunga so don't waste your time there if someone knows it it will be good you should be knowing it ki aap allergy ki baat kar rahe hain to maximum allergy dikhti kahan hai so if someone knows it any guess work india india okay fine next anyone else us okay next anyone else US is a vast country, you know that. So basically, US a particular I can mention particular places and they're more helpful. New York. Okay. Next, anyone else? I 
आई नो आंसर निकालना मुश्किल है सो दैट्स वाइन सो आई गिव वन आंसर एट लीस्ट सिटी एल आंसर सिटी इज विचिटा आई एम नॉट नो आई प्रोनाउंस इज करेक्टली कांका सेट इन यूएस इज फाइन सो वन ऑफ यू आंसर यूएस सो ब्रॉडली यू आर नॉट रॉन्ग सो बट इज वन ऑफ द सिटीज इन यूएस इट इज प्रेजेंटली दे ग्रेड एवरी इयर सो विच इज द हाइएस्ट एलर्जिक prevalent uh, city in the world so presently it is this one any particular country you want to know any particular or area of the globe you want to say broad spectrum we can say basically you can have a continent chalo bada mota mota ki kaun sa continent mein zyada allergy hai hello Is anyone answering? I think so. People are clueless about it. Okay, okay. 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 अफ्रीका ओके फेयर इनफ सो एशिया हो गया अफ्रीका हो गया अमेरिका हो गया एंटार्कटिका तो होगा नहीं बराबर है यूरोप यूरोप आल्सो यूरोप भी बोल दिया फाइन अब एक ही बात ऑस्ट्रेलिया न्यूजीलैंड फाइन दैट्स ट्रू सो दैट इज द आंसर सो बेसिकली दैट्स ट्रू ऑस्ट्रेलिया न्यूजीलैंड इज बेसिकली सेट इन फॉर हे फीवर इवन द ऑकलैंड इन न्यूजीलैंड इज आल्सो सेट टू बी द वर्ल्ड कैपिटल एट सम पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम अभी के लिए वो चेंज हो गया बट एलर्जीज ए वेरी कॉमन वर्ड है एनी थॉट प्रोसेस कैसा क्यों है एलर्जीज मीन्स ऑस्ट्रेलिया इज सपोज टू बी वेरी क्लीन सिटी एंड वेरी न्यूजीलैंड इज कंसिड टू बी दन ऑफ दिन सो वाई सो एलर्जी इज वेरी कॉमन इन दिस दिस एरिया एनी थॉट प्रोसेस कैसा क्यों एनी वन कैन अनम्यूट एंड कैन आंसर दैट्स फाइन दिस दिस यू शुड अंडरस्टैंड इट इज वाई देन वी कैन गो इन एलर्जीज तो थोड़ा सीखने को मजा आएगा Because they are used to very clean environment, right? Very good. Uh, so whenever they find something, like when when they you can, you can introduce yourself first and then you can speak. So basically, मुझे समझे कौन बोल रहे हैं. Right. Your good name, sir. My name is C B Ramana. Ramana. Yes, sir. Bully, please continue. Sorry. Very clean environment. Then what? So clean environment is good. No, it's good for so allergies. It's good, but that. when when you come across something like when you are not used to uh, like in even a small. uh in uh, call uh, what do you call uh, uncleanliness or some small bacteria can affect your health some small viruses because your bo you your body loses immunity to fight with the disease okay okay <clears throat> so i'm trying to say i can understand fine but anyone can elaborate more further uh, mr amman has tried to answer very nicely but uh, few points are still missing so basically if someone want to put in their own insight in that why this newton green city is basically of the world are considered as energy capitals sab so cold cold yeah. weather cold yeah. weather cold weather okay but cold weather basically we have in many places na i told the antarctica will be the most uh, uh, difficult place to go Right, or Russia, Canada, basically, there will be most uh, cold places uh, generally on the globe. You can say so. You store food, which uh, in case of cold weather, you store food. It generally yeah. your voice is not uh, clear. It just uh, I think so is echoing a lot. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, basically, in the cold weather, you store food, which uh, right. enables bacteria, fungi to survive and grow. Okay. Okay. Now we are going. Drifting to another side, so it's fine. I will answer that question. Basically, see, Mr. Ramana was trying to say something is okay. See, we have neat and clean environment. Okay, so in your young age, uh, if you see India, allergies are common, but some places, if you see, they are not common that much also. So thing is, there is variation in, in our own country. So if you see, uh, some kind of allergies are very common, sometimes are not. But dust related allergies, basically, and uh, this kind of allergies are very not there at all in this countries so people are not exposed to this 
allergies in their young age so they, they don't develop immunity against them and whenever in future they get exposed to this they feel they, they these things are unnatural to their body they feel that way and that is why they start reacting to those kind of the particles or we can say substances whatever they are coming in across in the future life so in this in as a we, we can say it's a boon in disguise in india that our uh, ancestors used to keep their children playing in the mud and play and ask them to, uh, to play whatever they want so if you remember in our olden days uh, we used to play in put playgrounds and get ourselves dirty and all those things so we were exposed to soil and those things in our childhood days and that was very easy and that was basically getting those exposure you might feel some uh, or some sneezing at that point of time because of dust we can say exposure or reaction at that point of time but slow become immune to those kind of allergies so that is very good in our setup but nowadays with uh, children not going to outdoor plays and unfortunately playing on very cleat and green environment again these allergies are uh, coming up again so this thought process just to understand that uh, having everything neat and clean also unfortunately invite some of the other problems so we'll go further on our lectures so basically what does allergy mean it's basically a greek word it means a altered reaction why altered reaction basically it's basically body's uh, response to a harmless substance actually so there is something which is harmless to others but it is harmful to our body thinks it is harmful to our own uh, uh, means our own self and that is why it reacts against the same so unfortunately that reaction is going to cause harm to your own body right so for example i generally give example to most of my patients suppose i am sitting in my uh, um, opd and i am uh, conversing with my patient and say suppose two or three patients are in front of me and some ants are going around on my table or on, on the floor so i can just say it's, it's summer season many times ants do come around on floor and we can see them so that's a natural thing so we don't uh, uh, much worry about it that's fine that's natural but suppose you see some unnatural thing coming over there suppose there is a wild animal or something like a lion or tiger from far off distance only no one going to stand there and we will run away so that's a natural reaction but suppose if those ants are moving around my table or on my floor and i start shouting oh ho oh, this ants are there and they are troubling me and all that blah 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 so who is getting troubled i am troubling myself basically i am getting angry on the ants they are not going to listen they are going to do their own work they do and go off so till the time they themselves go off i am going to worry myself seeing them so people front of me will try to pacify me shant karenge bhai shanti rakho kuch hai cheeti aaye chale jayenge chant chant ke sab chant chant mat lijiye sab acha ho jayega so that reaction what i am doing on my own seeing those ants physically was not required actually but if i am doing so i am harming my own body that happens with the allergies those dust particles yeah any other part uh, we can say a, a small pollen or something like that that might be going in someone else body yeah unne unke naak mein gaya ya unke phephad mein pahunch gaya to wahan pe unko koi reaction nahi hota but suppose it comes to my body aur mujhe wo reaction hua then it is suggestive of ki main wo cheez se allergic hu this is what in nutshell the allergy definition or allergy meaning is about बट ये कैसे होता है क्यों होता है बेसिकली आई हैव सम स्लाइड्स फॉर इट सो विल गो इन डिटेल थोड़ा बहुत वो सीखेंगे तो ये सब्सटेंसेस बेसिकली आर देयर व्हिच आर जनरली कॉल्ड एज द एलर्जेंस एंड दिस कैन बी डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ प्रोटीन्स व्हिच आर देयर व्हिच कैन बी पोलेंस फ्रॉम द ट्रीज ऑफ ग्रासेस सम फूड सम फर सम डस्ट सम माइट्स सम मोल्ड्स मेनी थिंग्स मेटल्स कॉस्मेटिक इवन ड्रग्स मेनी थिंग्स अराउंड सो ऑल दिस थिंग्स कैन फॉर्म अ ग्रुप called colors allergens which generally trouble us and cause the allergy so allergy in medical terms is generally called atopic diseases it's a huge group so basically i am going to concentrate today on only the respiratory part but it's a huge group which includes many things uh, respiratory system generally is bronchial asthma and allergic dermatitis two things generally come in the respiratory field in the skin there are other things also that uh, allergic dermatitis uh, eczema urticaria uh there is something called as food allergies a different chain uh, altogether generally very common in the childhood in the days and lastly there is something called as drug allergies also and the uh, acute phase is the anaphylactic reactions which is unfortunately very dangerous and uh, require the immediate management otherwise it is uh, even uh, life uh, life threatening also 
सो दिस आर द होल चंग ये सारे एलर्जी के विभिन्न प्रकार है बट किसको कौन सा होगा कैसे होगा क्यों होगा वो डिसाइड कैसे होती है सो दैट इज द होल द फुल पैथोलॉजी ऑल अबाउट बेसिकली ऐसा क्यों होता है कब होता है सो ऑल दोस थिंग्स वी हैव टू लर्न एंड हैव टू गो फर्दर अबाउट इट सो एलर्जी डायनेटिस वन थिंग विल गो वन बाय वन सो एलर्जी डायनेटिस इज द बेसिकली द एलर्जी इन द नोज द समथिंग कॉल्ड एज वन एयरवे वन डिजीज व्हाई दिस वर्ड इज यूज्ड एंड देयर समथिंग कॉल्ड एज एरिया गाइडलाइंस द एरिया गाइडलाइंस इज ए आर आई ए एलर्जी डायनेटिस एंड इट्स इंपैक्ट ऑन अस्थमा so that is a we have a guidelines made uh, every uh, few years we have a guidance for that so that allergic rhinitis and asthma they are related many time it is said that uh, if a person is asthmatic 70% of them they do have allergic rhinitis if you ask the cross uh, inquiry or you go in details then you get that history also and reverse way round if you are only allergic rhinitis on day to day so you 50% of suppose 100 patients are allergic rhinitis today 50% of this those patient in future might be becoming asthmatic also so we don't know who is going to become and who are not but our aim is generally to treat all the patient properly and one or one disease because uh, if you see that whole our skin in outside is only total one skin so basically everywhere we have the same skin the same thing god has also made from the nose when the inner skin starts same skin goes till the lungs so same disease which can affect your airways can affect your sinusitis and airways together also so this distance is not very far so we can easily understand ki jo taklif aapke naak mein ya nasal condition kar sakti hai sinusitis kar sakti hai that same thing can trouble your airways also can cause reaction in the airways and your bronchioles and bronchitis uspe taklif de sakti so that is what the whole uh, way is to understand both are related uh uska classification bhi hota hai thoda complicated dikhta hai aapko but very easy to understand It is very simple. Either intermittent or sometimes it happens. It happens persistently, regularly. So, its definition is that if after a certain time, then we will say persistent. If after a certain time, then we will say persistent. So, that is the way. And either it is mild or it is moderate to severe. So, mild, intermittent, mild persistent can happen, or moderate to severe can happen. So, moderate to severe can happen. So, mild, intermittent, mild persistent can happen. So, moderate to severe can happen. So, mild, intermittent, mild persistent can happen. So, moderate to severe can happen. So, mild, intermittent, mild persistent can happen. So, moderate to severe can happen. So, mild, intermittent, mild persistent can happen. So, moderate to severe can happen. So, mild, intermittent, mild persistent can happen. So, moderate to severe can happen. So, mild, intermittent, So, एक छोटा सा क्लासिफिकेशन देख के रखा है दैट इज वेरी इजी टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड ट्रीट इट आल्सो नेक्स्ट वी गो अबाउट द ब्रोंकियल अस्थमा पार्ट उसमें कैसे कैसे होता है सो बेसिकली व्हेन अस्थमा व्हाट कम्स फ्रॉम माइंड व्हाट डस आवर ब्रेन थिंक अ पर्सन हु इज पैंटिंग अराउंड अ पर्सन हु इज बेसिकली कफिंग और हैविंग बीइंग ब्रेथलेस अ पर्सन यूजिंग अ पंप और बेसिकली अ पर्सन हु इज ट्रबल विद सो मेनी एलर्जीज अराउंड सो दैट इज व्हाट द वर्ड अस्थमा कम्स अराउंड आई मींस व्हेन द वी थिंक ऑफ अस्थमा These are just uh, data. I don't want to bore you with the data. As all such data is available, hota hai. But just to understand one thing is that asthma is rampant everywhere in the world. Uh, prevalence goes on increasing, and every year, every year, more and more patients are getting are getting into this uh, uh, unfortunate uh, disease part, and we are uh, there to treat them. Now, actually, if asthma ko thik se treatment diya jaye, so there is a great economic burden behind it. unfortunately it is not properly treated so if you see that yellow uh, columns which are seen the asthma basically is on the rise and the economic burden is also on the rise because if they are not properly treated and the small violet columns if you see that, that those are the columns if basically they are treated according to proper guidelines so we have a gina guidelines uh, which is there every year it comes and every year we give gives us a good guidelines at what has to be used and how has to be used But you can clearly see the difference. It is almost one third the cost of treatment can be reduced on the in a country like us that we can save lots of money if patient are properly treated. Unfortunately, asthma patients are, if you know, and most of patients are just diagnosed by just uh, uh, the sake of they having breathlessness, and some chardi khansi hai, apko asthma hai, and some pump is written for them, and wo saalo sab cold pump lete hain log. So genuinely diagnosis kabi hota nahi hai. Unfortunately, treatment एक बार चालू कर दिया पेशेंट थोड़ा ठीक हो गया बंद कर दिया ट्रीटमेंट सो देर ऑलवेज दिस काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स डू हैपन विद अस्तमा थिंग्स बट दैट्स अनफॉर्चुनेट यार वी कैन डिस्कस इन डिटेल्स व्हेन वी टॉक ऑन अस्तमा सम पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम सो विद द थिंग्स जस्ट बेस्ड लाइन टू से यू देयर इज अ ग्रेट ट्रीटमेंट गैप इन अस्तमा बिकॉज़ पेशेंट आर नॉट डिटेक्टेड प्रॉपर्ली दे डोंट सीक मेडिकल अटेंशन दैट क्लियरली देयर इज नो एक्सेस टू द हेल्थ सर्विसेज फॉर सम पीपल अराउंड एंड दैट मिसेस आर मेनी टाइम्स मिस्ड समथिंग एल्स एंड डायग्नोज समथिंग एल्स टू डू हैपन 
so currently what it is needed is do asthma it's one of the very easily reversible airway disease but it is the most ignored one and this line i always remember is someone if you can remember i will be very happy that asthma is actually for <coughs> for asthma the uh, india is a death capital at present out of 100 percent of uh, 100 asthma patient dying 44 die in india that's very bad for us so physically we i am trying myself uh, very hard means we, i had started my asthma clinic at hindu hospital this uh, pre covid times and we are going to relaunch it again after after everything being in place now so we have dedicated asthma clinics also for addressing these issues but thing is that everyone should understand that this kind of problems are there we understand but need proper treatment and many times misdiagnose and is partially supervised many times for treatment liya thoda chhod diya uh, people don't follow up with doctors uh, very frequently and that is why it is left and basically we only go after in exacerbation again you get hospitalized for a couple of days you become better go home take treatment for some days you are fine again and you just think that asthma is gone so it happens commonly because say asthma is reversible disease i told you so once you are fine you think of stopping treatment but you never assess yourself so how to assess and all those things we take it uh, here some slides for that also but the most important thing is you to remember that unfortunately like tb asthma is also taboo in india at present so asthma unfortunately is a taboo uh, in india till date so that is uh, not very great but uh, the fact that uh, asthma do uh, is seen as a very big disease and if a person has asthma then it is looked down upon very uh, usual so what are the triggers for this airways if you can see the left hand side is normal airway and right hand side is very small figure but i put in initially and right hand side is inflamed airway so anything under the under the sun we can say can be a trigger to your asthma or your allergic rhinitis and can trouble so that is fine even smoking people think only if the smoking is there it can only be a copd or other disease no even smoking in asthmatic can exaggerate his uh, his asthmatic condition and can worsen his asthmatic condition so that is one thing even the occupation of people i had published one article basically related that he was a painter and due to the paint that spray which is coming to his uh, uh, he was exposed to that spray and that is why basically he has become breathless very frequently though it was not related to allergy at to any as a in one allergy like ige and all those things were not very raised but he was allergic to those paint and colors that dye uh, basically and because of that he was becoming breathless so occupation is also very important uh, plays an important role in the patients becoming allergic next is basically uh, how the stomach means how the allergy develops basically what we want to understand but as we know that is no one has understood it completely but there is always some genetic as well as some environmental factors going hand in hand how the say generally say is basically that allergy do come to us with genetically hereditary and if we have good interaction with the environment basically you can lead a normal life fantastic no issues with with there but suppose the environment is not suiting you suppose some dust particles or some allergens getting into your nose you will have some sinusitis uh, allergic rhinitis or something like that it goes in your uh, respiratory system below you might be having your uh, uh, asthma suppose uh, you uh, suppose i am got a uh, watch i am wearing suppose it is i am not uh, i am not very con- uh, what you call uh, means i am allergic to that kind of metal what my uh, what belt is having uh, my skin would react to it and it can have some redness initially or some uh, blebs over there and it be itchy so all these reactions do come up depending on your bodies and environment relations so jis tarah se basically body or environment relation hai wo jo reactions hota hai uske hisab se allergy bahar aati hai that is in nutshell we can understand but if detail mein samajhna hai to basically allergy is a over reaction we can say of immunity as said ki maine chitti ho dekh ke agar main chilla raha hu to basically main over react kar raha hu iski zarurat nahi thi theek hai and that development basically generally happen two phases one is sensitization phase or we can induction phase and second is the effector phase ye kya hota hai you can have a small figure for it and not ki pehli figures wali ek figure rakha hai so that we can understand very nicely that if a person comes in contact with allergy the left side you can see the single or the repeated exposure then induction phase so initially it uh, there is some some kind of a we can say induction starts and sorry hmm. and that basically we give some kind of a if you can have a pointer here yeah.
So this was the induction phase, basically how the, uh, the if a person has a single exposure or repeat exposure. So induction phase can last for about days or months altogether. And then the second phase is the effector phase. The effector phase is basically that the person is now very prone to this kind of allergies. So if there is continuous exposure coming to this phase, then immediately the patient gets this clinical allergy. Clinical allergy means wherever it is. If it is respiratory allergy, respiratory problem will come up, or if it is skin allergy, skin allergy, skin problems will come up. So, but general understanding is depending on where the problem is, you will get this kind of allergies, and unfortunately, you will develop the uh, clinical symptoms because of that. Okay. So, clinical symptoms only appear in the effector phase, as I told you. But sometimes patients do not progress from conduction phase, uh, induction phase to further, uh, to further the uh, effector phase. And that is why basically they don't develop symptoms also at some point of time. So that is also fine that people uh, can uh, tolerate that kind of uh, allergy levels. That is also possible. So who is going to develop depends on this all reaction that who is going to get shifted from that uh, induction phase to a effector phase. And then depending on the exposure of the allergy, the things do come the symptoms so that was the whole about the how the allergy develops now what are the respiratory allergies basically they are caused by the proteins which are there in the air they trigger the airways and cause the inflammation over there and they are either in the indoor environment or the ex outdoor environment uh, why did i mention indoor and outdoor both because see outdoor we are all are aware that unfortunately traffic because the industries uh, fire somewhere in the environment, and dust particles moving around, and all those things. We construction work. Uh, Mumbai is always under construction, and nowadays it is peak after COVID. So it's fine. We understand those kind of things very easy to understand. But indoor pollution is one more thing you have to understand. Bohot pollution with the indoor pollution also. Uh, many times even people have uh, recorded that indoor pollution is more than the outdoor pollution. So that is unfortunate, but the truth. A uh, simple example, if I give people try to have that mosquito coils or mosquito nets, uh, or mosquito mats which are burned uh, basically for the mosquito as uh, use as mosquito repellent. So if you boil that one coil, so that is equal to 400 cigarette smoke. smoke hai uske andar. So if you think about how and you're inhaling them very frequently, that is one thing. Uh, even that uh, small diyas and agarbattis and people use dhoop and all those things, they people do get uh, trouble because of all these things also, especially perfumes and all those things which we use in house, the deodorants we use, air fresheners we use, all those things are leading to indoor pollutions, which unfortunately are going to harm us. Okay, so further, uh, what are the sources? Many sources as I, we can discuss and keep on discussing, there is no end to it. But yeah, house dust contains various components, which can be how dust mites, it can be, can be, it can be pet allergens, it can be pollens, it can be other particles uh, moving around. If the humidity is very high, then also mold comes up over there. That is also uh, keeps on your allergy. And they have mold spores, which can cause allergies, uh, especially the alle uh, fungal allergies are very common with this kind of molds and all those things. Uh, how that, <clears throat> sorry, house dust mites are there. Basically, they uh, whenever it's hot and humid climate, and they generally found in the beddings and the clothing and mattresses, and they can come up. Uh, pet allergens, we all know that people who are having pets, they have uh, their uh, dander over there, that is dead skin cells and their furs and all those things. Even people exposed to pigeons and their droppings and feathers and fibers from there, all those things can be allergic to. And uh, this is what it can be long term exposure, in the and they can be lying on small, small pieces and it can be moving around on a uh, into large areas and can cause uh, various people to get affected because of these allergies. So next we come up with the climate has some role in this, definitely. The increase in the allergy condition maybe a little bit of climate change also as some of people nicely pointed out that cold temperatures do have some relation to the uh, cold temperatures, moist temperatures. If, there's like, if you see allergies are more, pro more prominent in the uh, monsoon time and only the uh, winter times. They are less during the summer times because as such the environment is, uh, but when the monsoon is approaching, that humidity again increases. At that time again, this is the phase when we are passing through that it is hot and humid both. So basically that is one more phase when the allergy comes up very easily. So the warmer, warmer climate basically leads to a longer pollen season 
and therefore increase in the incidence of respiratory allergens over there. Uh, pollens can have some cross allergies also. I mean, suppose a person is uh, allergic to some kind of particular plants or uh, fruits, then the fruits or plants related to related to those uh, allergic products can that those pollens can also affect you. But that cross allergy is generally less uh, uh, or milder, we can say, to the primary allergies. But cross allergies also do occur. Next is what are symptoms? So symptoms depending on basically what. Uh, organs it is involved as we are discussing the respiratory part of it so nasal part of it is it is included then watery eyes and something called post nasal drip post nasal drip your throat and it is irritating that is called as post nasal drip so that is also quite easily be possible and yeah that causes a problem also next is what if it goes below the below the throat so if it is uh, affecting a respiratory system then shortness of breath very called breathlessness sas punna sas your frequency, whatever uh, words we use for that, dumb pull and all those things. Uh, coughing is also very irritable and generally at night time we have it. Uh, wheezing is very common. The sound comes from, from, from your chest wall, zoom, 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 kind of music you can hear yourself or during night time you can, someone else can hear from your chest. And uh, chest tightness, because you very chest tightness or heaviness, basically something is there uh, stuck to your chest, very heavy, and we cannot able to breathe out properly. And that is what uh, people feel as a symptoms in case of uh, asthma. So what different uh, respiratory pathogens we already discussed, but yeah, latex and uh, basically pollens as I discussed, basically they are there and uh, causing the different problems. So how do we diagnose them? So we have a uh, diagnosing, we have to get clinical examination and clinical medical history has to be given. And some tests are definitely helpful. There are two types of tests generally are available for the skin point of view. Some blood test and some skin test. Skin test is always on a uh, more reliable than the blood test. The blood test we have the RST pattern of uh, test or ELISA kind of test which we do it, but they are less reliable compared to the blood, uh, skin test. Skin test either they either prick on the uh, skin basically with that allergen or they inject small injections over there and they wait for the reaction and this uh, not very great test basically because it's a little bit painful hai. but it can give you an idea of what allergic uh, what allergy you are suffering from. But that would tell you one thing, allergy tests do have the pros and cons. Uh, so always consult doctor before going for all this test and don't do it yourself. That just out of the, uh, out of your. Can we do a uh, IgE, but IgE from proper lab. Proper labs, I mean, is because there are, it is done with a special method. So uh, most of labs, local labs don't use those methods and that is why they miss out on many attempts. Uh, for example, if you want to say Metropolis is one of the good labs, SRL is one of the good labs, uh, Hinduja basically is one of the good labs. Basically, they use the, those techniques in which the IEG is easily picked up. And basically, depending on the unit, international units, what is required, they measure and give it to us. So that is the way it is useful. So if you can just do a simple test for your own, if you want to do, is uh, we can say the total IgE. And if in the blood test, if IgE is on the higher side, you will realize that, yeah, it is a allergy reaction. Next, for the asthma part, there are many tests available. We can discuss all in, in, a, in a length uh, sometime later. But uh, yeah, just to mention, as I, as I was telling you, that people need to diagnose that asthma in time. That is, spirometry is the most easiest test available. And unfortunately, if you see a two third of the patient who may be labeled asthma would have not heard the term spirometry also, uh, would not have done also. Obviously, they don't know, they don't do it also. So that is the unfortunate part in our uh, uh, in our uh, nation that uh, we are not aware of this test. Not no one is doing it that frequently. So that is unfortunate. But nowadays, slowly the awareness is increasing, and with post COVID, uh, the people are uh, giving more uh, importance to their own health, especially lung health. So whenever they go for the health checkup, they do advise for a spirometry nowadays. Initially, there was not that great. Uh, uh, what you call uh, awareness about doing a spirometry or so. Uh, other tests which can be easily be done on OPD basis, the peak flow is small uh, uh, with a cylindrical device in which you will blow once and see how uh, fast you can blow and you can measure very easily. It's an OPD based instrument and it can just tell you how bad or good it is your lung function is. Uh, there are few uh, other devices like Pheno, Pheno machine we have and we have oscillometer, uh, oscillometer, uh, two specific devices in which we can measure your allergies also. And basically we can measure that uh, your airway obstruction is there or not. And there are something as provocative tests, which we don't use very frequently, but yeah, for experimental purpose, research purpose, they are still used. 
that to find out exactly which allergy and which uh, uh, problem, uh, which uh, product is going to, uh, going to create, create a problem for the patients. Uh, next is we come to the last part of our talk, that is the treatment point of view. The best treatment for an allergy treatment is to avoid allergy. Identify I am allergic to so and so thing and avoid it. A uh, simple example, if I want to give to it, I had a uh, teenage kid. He was uh, very good. Uh, he had uh, just an allergy and a mild asthma, but he was allergic to cheese. And uh, unfortunately, he was very fond of the cheese also. So his father tried various different companies and various different methods of doing giving him cheese. But every time he used to have that, when it time he has a cheese, he had that respiratory exacerbation and problems were starting. So finally, if you are aware, the Holland makes a different kind of cheese. So he imported some special cheese from Holland and for that also to give it to him. But he had developed reaction to that also. So finally, I had to request him. The best thing is, because if you don't leave that allergic thing, then allergy keeps on increasing day by day. Problem is that. And once it uh, breaches a threshold, then it can have an acute reaction. That is called anaphylaxis. This may basically you have a choking of your throat and a very bad reaction, and it might be life endangering, end injuring also. So, so allergy is Basically, if you are allergic to something, but best is to avoid the allergy. There are other methods also, but we'll just come to it later on. But best is to avoid the allergy. That is one thing. Uh, we can have, uh, we can have, you can use allergy testing for knowing it, but that is, I told you, with a pinch of salt, consult, uh, uh, consult it before that. Next is, as I told you, to avoid triggers, what can be best we can do? There are various steps, I mentioned it, I also know that. But thing is, these are the things which possibly if you can do, it will be good for you. Simple thing is as post-COVID, you already have become very much uh, health uh, conscious and become very conscious with respect to the dust and the cleanliness of your house and uh, clothes and everything. So it's good for us. It is indirectly helping us. But yeah, the few things we do have to be careful. Uh, keeping a nasal passage keen and washing our hands very frequently and keeping a moisture uh, control and all those things definitely can help us in putting the uh, allergy to a uh, great control, best what we can try. Uh, in one single slide, if you want to see the few things that I mentioned, few figures basically here and there. So that is going to help you in understanding that if you can avoid few triggers, then definitely you are going to develop, going to, uh, develop allergy in a lesser amount. Uh, are there medications available? Yeah, there are many medications available. For the nasal part, we can have nasal sprays. How they look, I'll just give you, show, you, show you in the next slide. Anti-stomach medications, oral and inhaled, both are available. And decongestants. Decongestants, we all know that, for example, ads like Autraven and all this thing, they add like anything. But with a pinch of salt, I like to tell you, if you use uh, decongestants very frequently, they, they are very fantastic. As if you're meeting after, just after 10 minutes or half an hour, you have nothing to do, basically you take a decongestant, at least that, few hours will be taken care of, but it has a reverse condition also many times. So be careful that uh, after that phase is over, you will again be congested again, that will be more also. So just be careful for using this kind of uh, <coughs> decongestant very frequently. Uh, how does management of allergy rhinitis, as I told you, it can be uh, intermittent, mild or intermittent, moderate, severe. It can be persistent uh, with moderate, severe or mild. Depending on that, there is a whole chart available for according to area guidelines. We can treat it either with a uh, inhaled uh, antihistaminic and a steroid or a oral required as per the patient's condition. Nasal sprays they look like this and can be easily be available and can be easily be used. Uh, next is epinephrine. Yeah, epinephrine is one of the drugs which is used for severe reaction. Anaphylactic reaction, as I told you, is still used. The immunotherapy. Just I'll, uh, just discuss for a moment or so. Immunotherapy. The basic fundamental immunotherapy is as I told you, best thing is to avoid the allergen. Uh, or you get acquainted to that allergen so nicely that that allergen does not remain allergen for you. So that is the principle for the immunotherapy. I mean, suppose, for example, uh, someone is touching me, means something is continuing touching me like this. So if I avoid, I remove my hand over here. So then I am not getting affected. Or else I'll make my brain so uh, inactive from this perspective, this touch, that okay, let, let them continue to touch over here. Basically, I won't have any issues. So basically, that can be easily be uh, handled that way. So 
the second part was the immunotherapy that training yourself your own body to get small small exposure to the doses and slowly you become immune to that allergic reaction uh, people do do uh, uh, means follow immunotherapy is very frequently and use it very rampantly but there is a, again a caveat of usage for all patients it is not safe for all and it might not be helpful for all so depending uh, this only thing is you have to consult a good uh, either pulmonologist or allergy specialist before going to all those things uh for asthma part basically the medications yeah the bronchodilators easily available like pumps and various uh, oral therapies also available and inhaled and oral steroids are also there basically depending on the stage of what you are suffering from uh, the details told you the asthma we are not keeping this as a asthma class we will just keep the allergy point of view so basically any other uh, things uh, which is related to allergy yeah this kind of medications can definitely be used uh so simple and straight forward what are the take home messages uh, we can have that allergy is a general misinterpretation of our own immune system uh, identifying the allergen is very essential uh, knowing the early symptoms of allergy is very helpful to identify the allergen also and treating the problems at the earliest is very important because if you treat earlier then it does not go to the, uh, the severe stages and definitely will be leading a uh, quite a good life because totally removing allergy is many times not possible but controlling is definitely possible it is not difficult at all so towards the end i will ask the one more question so i asked you the worst place for allergy how it is the best place for allergic patients can anyone answer that some people are awake till now so if anyone be able to answer i will be very happy to know that कोई जाग रहा है सब सो गए एवरीवन इज अवे मिसेस अग्रवाल आप हाथ उठ उठाए हैं तो आप भी बात कर सकते हैं यू कैन अनम्यूट योरसेल्फ या फिर चैट बॉक्स में टाइप कीजिएगा हां नहीं मैं टाइप नहीं कर पाऊंगी अच्छा अब बोलिए इसे समझ आ रहा है कि खोल के बोलो समझ रहे हैं समझ आ रहा है मुझे अभी एलर्जी पहले तो बहुत ज्यादा थी और पेट में एकदम लाल लाल चटकते ही पड़ते थे नहीं इन्होंने क्वेश्चन पूछा है डॉक्टर मोदी ने कि सबसे बढ़िया जगह कौन सी है जहाँ पे एलर्जी नहीं होती है पूरे दुनिया में वो क्वेश्चन का आंसर कीजिएगा आपके क्वेश्चन हम डेफिनेटली एंड में लेंगे मुझे समझ कम आया इनकी बातें मैं हिंदी ज्यादा समझती हूँ ये समझी हो लेकिन थोड़ा कोशिश करते कोई बात नहीं अच्छा क्या जितना समझा उतना अपना अच्छा कोई बात नहीं समझा पूछ लीजिए आईसीयू में नहीं होगा एलर्जी आपको कहां पे नहीं होगा सॉरी आईसीयू 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 दैट क्यू वेरी फाइन आईसीयू इज द वर्स्ट प्लेस टू हैव एलर्जी मिसेस देसाई व्हाट्स टू से समथिंग यस मिसेस देसाई नेक्स्ट ड्राई वेदर ड्राई वेदर ज्यादा इफेक्ट करती है ना पेशेंट को अच्छा लगता है ड्राई वेदर में ड्राई गुड गुड थॉट प्रोसेस ओके ड्राई वेदर अच्छा है पर तो कौन सी जगह ड्राई किधर होती है मैडम ड्राई किधर मिलती है और समुद्र से जो दूर जगह होती है ना वहां पे ड्राई वेदर होती है वेरी गुड वेरी नाइस अच्छा थॉट प्रोसेस है एनीवन एल्स वांट टू ट्राई मे बी अ हिल स्टेशन लाइक जंगल काफी है कुछ और भी है वो आंसर हो सकता था बट जंगल काफी है तो ठीक है काफी लोग बोले ड्राई एनवायरमेंट डेजर्ट बट वो ये डेजर्ट नहीं है खाने वाला जंगल इट इज द अदर डेजर्ट So generally people, if you ask Google को पूछा अगर कि best place कौन सा allergy patient के लिए तो desert बता देगा पर वहाँ पे रह नहीं सकते unfortunately और आपको sand का allergy है तो खत्म फिर वो इसका problem चालू हो जाता है तो so just as a, a small uh, जो we can end this so anyone else सभी question किसी को है कुछ कोई queries हैं questions से sure doctor Kajal हाँ लेकिन तो जी कौन start करो yes so will you please stop the screen share so we can see you as 